It's easy to think the inspired text is there, uh, what's to write? Uh, but it's not as simple as just taking uh, little half-hour chunks out of the four gospel accounts and throwing them on script and filming them. Which gospel account do you use? Do you use Matthew's account, Mark's, Luke's? So very quickly, we saw the need to lay each of the four gospel accounts uh, side by side and decide which account in every case, every event, gives us the fullest picture, the most details. So even if you can't say everything that appears in all four accounts, you use the one to carry the bulk of the story. The others provide the rest of the details that we'll actually see. This is very interesting. David Schaefer is here highlighting the fundamental problem with creating a live action Messiah, a live action Jesus based on the Gospels, there's just a small problem. <laughs> the Gospels disagree with each other. That's what he's hinting at here. Although, of course, he's never going to just say straightforwardly, yeah, the Gospels disagree with each other. So we have a bit of a problem as to which version of which story we use. But that is essentially the problem. David Schaefer's solution is not to turn to Bible scholars, not to involve people who have devoted their careers to analyzing the text and reaching conclusions regarding which stories were or were not plausible. I would imagine the one about Jesus walking on water that doesn't seem so plausible, but we'll come to that story. This is not an organization that concerns itself with facts, with scholarship, with understanding history and archaeology. They have their dogma. They have their teachings. Those teachings come first. It's not about whether something actually happened or not. It's about whether an account serves their purpose and can be used to emphasize the control of the governing body. So when it comes to deciding which conflicting gospel account they're going to use to portray Jesus, David Schaefer says, Decide which account in every case, every event, gives us the fullest picture, the most details. Never mind whether the story is plausible or not. Never mind what scholars have to say. We're interested in which story has the most details. The story with the most details, that's the one we'll use. That's the one that wins. If there are more details, therefore it must be true. Which is clearly a logical fallacy. You may be watching this thinking, what's Lloyd talking about? He's talking about the Gospels contradicting each other. Here he is again, slamming the Bible. What does he know? The Bible is God's inerrant word. It can never contradict itself. It must just be Lloyd getting all confused. I have four examples for you. You are welcome to fact check me here. Look up these verses for yourself and decide for yourself whether these are or are not contradictions. Example number one relates to Jairus' daughter. When Jairus approached Jesus in Mark 5 verse 23, it was evident that his daughter was still alive. She was not dead yet. However, when Jairus approaches Jesus, in Matthew 9, verse 18, his daughter has already died. That's quite a significant difference in the prognosis for his daughter. On the one hand, daughter still alive, possible that Jesus might be able to help. Jesus gets distracted and by the time they get there, the daughter has, has in fact died. And then in another account, Jairus goes to Jesus and says, my daughter has died. Interestingly, in the New World Translation, they change the text. 
they must have realized the governing body or whoever compiled the New World Translation, they must have realized that this was a contradiction and just tried to soften it a little bit. Because in the New World Translation, Jairus says to Jesus in Matthew 9 verse 18, by now my daughter must be dead. But if you look up the same verse in almost any other Bible, Jairus says to Jesus, my daughter has just died. Quite a significant difference between all the other translations and the New World Translation. Again, they've realized that this is a contradiction. And rather than letting the Bible speak for itself, they've tried to soften it. They've tried to cover over it, which I think says a lot about the reliability of the New World Translation. Next example, the women and the empty tomb. What did the women do when they discovered Jesus' empty tomb? According to Matthew 28 verse 8 and Luke 24 verse 9, they tell the disciples and or everyone. They tell people there's an empty tomb. In Mark 16 verse 8, the women discover the empty tomb and they tell no one. Which is it? Which, which story do we believe? Which story are we going to recreate in full HD in a live action story of the Messiah. Next example, Joseph's father, Joseph being the father of Jesus. So who was Joseph's father? Who was Jesus's grandfather on Joseph's side? In Matthew 1 verse 16, it was Jacob. In Luke 3 verse 23, it was Heli. Two different guys <laughs> apparently were simultaneously fathers of Joseph. Interestingly, these were two contradicting genealogies supplied in the Gospels to emphasize the pedigree, the lineage of Jesus. And yet really those genealogies are inconsequential if Jesus was born of Mary directly through God's Spirit. Of what relevance is it who Joseph's father was if Joseph actually had no input or no involvement in the pregnancy? It's irrelevant, isn't it, who Joseph's father was or who Joseph's grandfather or great-grandfather was? Seems fairly obvious that the genealogies predate the teaching that Jesus was born of a virgin. Anyway... <laughs> Having dropped that little bombshell, let's move on to my fourth and final contradiction. Although there are more, I'm just giving you four just to demonstrate my point here. When did Jesus die? Well, according to Matthew 26, 17, Mark 14, verse 12, and Luke 22, verse 7, the Last Supper was held on the first day of the Passover. But in John 19.14, there's a nice easy scripture for you to remember. John 19.14, the Last Supper was held a day earlier and Jesus was killed on the first day of Passover. So the Gospels can't even agree when it comes to the day on which Jesus died. And of course, this death was supposed to have huge significance, being as it was sacrificial, a human sacrifice, <laughs> so that everyone can be forgiven of their sins. This is the problem David Schaefer is alluding to. David Schaefer's solution, ah, we'll just pick the story that has the most detail. If it has the most detail, it must be true. <laughs> 